Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, so beautiful. Wow, really blinking my eyes open. Um, I just uh, slept for a long time. I had a really nice slumber. Then a really lovely meditation. Um, so uh, I'm feeling really rested, uh, really taking great care of myself here in the jungle um, of Tulum. And yeah, I just wanted to hop on and share with you guys how sometimes we gotta, and I talked about this in a video when I was on the Pacific uh, Ocean in uh, Washington, but uh, sometimes we've gotta really move towards God. Um, there have been times on this path where I felt like the divine has just carried me through. It's like the divine just carried the day and it was so effortless. Um, and there was a sense of ease to it. And that, that was a beautiful thing. Um, but more recently, I found myself really having to assert my will to like kind of show the divine like I'm here I'm here to serve you and I'm going to keep serving you and I'm going to keep being here to serve you regardless if I feel your support or not I've had to connect to this we'll call it the divine masculine movement of showing up and doing what I know is best on a soul level regardless of how I feel, regardless of my emotions and thoughts. For so long, I've been so ruled by my emotions, feelings, and thoughts. And that's really a sign that we're lost to some feminine wounding when our emotions and thoughts rule us. And uh, that's, I'm getting some chills saying that. Um, very small chills, not the, you know, uh, but nevertheless, I feel like the divine is trying to wake up something in me, like this power and this strength that can listen to, to the higher self, can carry through, can carry, can like go forward with divine instructions without feeling necessarily tapped in and connected um, or in a channeled state. And so what happened to me recently um, to kind of put me in this state was a major, another, yet another, a major fall from grace um, where I did some intense self-sabotaging um, and I really got buried in some darkness. It was really heavy. And, and Ajay Shante has a quote, something to the nature of the higher we climb, the further the fall. Uh, and that's so true on the levels of consciousness. It's like the higher you ascend, like the steeper the consequences and the more severe the consequences are when you do fall from grace. And as intense as that is, the lessons when you fall get so deeply carved in you that when you ascend again, when you start embodying more and more light again, you are so much less likely to fall. You are um, much more likely to be uh, able to embody and, um, you know, stay aligned um, as you ascend again because of the lessons you learn when you do fall from grace, when you do fall out of integrity. And so this has happened time and time again on my path. And each time it's been a, far, a farther fall to find rock bottom. Um, and it was interesting. This last time I fell, I was really looking for an off ramp. My egoic tendencies, my ego self was really looking for a way out of this work. And it was pretty scary because the divine was like, all right, you, you can be done with this work. You, four, four, four right there. Um, the divine, that was a scary part. It's like the divine was willing to say, okay, you want to go back to how you were living before Kundalini? Here you go. And, and I found myself playing a lot of poker, 
Um, I even smoked a few cigarettes and I, you know, I, I smoked them with love. I didn't, wasn't hard on myself for it. Um, but I found myself playing a lot of cards and, and not feeling drawn to this work, you know. Um, and it was really interesting. It was like a part of me just kind of needed a break. Um, but I, I found myself playing a lot of poker and, and noticing like how dead it was for me, how I had already lived that life, how I was just recreating a life that I had um, lived before Kundalini, um, recreating that old existence, that old existence that brought me no fulfillment, no real meaning or joy. And it, and it became real meaningless real fast. It did not take long. I, I believe it was like under a week of doing that, that something recognized like, hey, this actually isn't for me anymore. I actually don't want an off ramp. And, and one of the things that really crystallized that for me is when I was on retreat with Craig Holiday on a Zoom retreat. And during one of the meditations, um, I just felt like a lot of, a lot of this sense of like, I'm free within darkness. I'm free within pain, you know? I just started to feel really liberated. And I know this video's hopping all around. <laughs> that's what happens when you're not in a channeled state and that's okay. Um, and during, or right after the meditation, Craig Holiday asked us all in the chat to to really make a statement of I am like what do you like the deepest I am you have and and I saw people saying I am shimmering light or I am uh, joyful light or these beautiful things and what kept coming to me is I am divine darkness and I and I was like really kind of scared to say that but for some reason that's just what the light made me say and i said i said i am divine darkness in the chat and i was like oh why did i say that and all of a sudden this crushing darkness came into my being like so much darkness started descending into me and it was really thick and really intense and i still don't have a lot of clarity on exactly why that happened because I still feel like I'm processing so much of it, so much of that divine darkness. It didn't feel, it wasn't like an evil darkness. I had no, I definitely dealt with a lot of that with clients helping them release um, that kind of darkness, we'll say. It, it was not that, it, it felt very divine. It felt very much of the light. Um, and it was, but it was just so dense and it was like so much of it. And it was like so incredibly overwhelming for my human egoic nature. And the, the, the part about it that I remember most clear was like how reorienting it was for my soul. Like how it really helped me um, kind of release a lot of these parts of me that wanted to escape this path, that wanted to, to, to find an off ramp. It was like that darkness came in and it just, it like solidified like who I am and what I'm about and like what my life is about here on planet earth. And I think after that, I played a little more poker, a couple more nights, but then it was just over. And I knew though, I knew when I was playing poker for the last time, I knew it was my last night. And something like my soul just spoke to me, my higher self just spoke to me and said, this is it, enjoy this for what it's worth because this is the last time you're ever gonna play poker. And I knew it that night. And that was, uh, I think it was like a week or so ago, maybe something like time is getting really um, funky. But that's, that, that was like, it all culminated with that meditation and saying that, and it's just like, that was, sometimes it's like a divine darkness can like really um, realign us in a deep way. It's like, sometimes we need that solid, that density. It was almost like this masculine presence that was just like, this is who you are. It was like this reassertion, this reaffirmation or something of, it was like so grounding. It was like, I think part of me was starting to get a little ungrounded. It was just trying to like escape this whole experience in a sense. And it's like that 
retreat with Craig was so realigning for me um, when it comes to walking forward on this path. And it was so interesting when I came forward, um, you know, when it was my turn for the Q and A or for like just to share and to get feedback, however you want to say it. Craig even mentioned that. And I didn't even bring any of this forward. I didn't tell him I was looking for the off ramp, that I'd been playing lots of poker, that I was maybe looking to do something else, like the ego parts of me. I didn't mention any of that. I just mentioned like what had happened with the divine darkness descending into me. And he said, when a lot of people reach the point that you have reached on your awakening path, they start looking for something else to do. They move to the coast and become this, or they go to this kind of, they go to school for this. Because he said, when, when we start to get pretty free in the darkness, like he was mentioning how free I, I'm starting to get in the darkness. Because there was, I, I mentioned him, there was something that even though there was all this darkness and everything out here was darkness because it was just reflecting my internal state, there was something here that was still so in love with life, that was loving it so much, even though it was kind of a hell realm. And I was mentioning that. And, and what he said is like, Often people, when they reach this point, the point that I've reached on, on my awakening journey, is that they look for the off-ramp. They look, they, they look to kind of hang it up in a sense and, and go do something else. Because he said, a lot of times when we're this free in the darkness as I am, it's like God has us in the trenches. Has us in the trenches, um, helping other people become liberated in the intense darkness that they're lost in. It's in the trenches of helping people, of holding space for people to feel through really dark trauma that they've gone through. And so the egoic part can start to look for an escape, he was saying. But it, it was like just this huge opening and opportunity that he was really holding space for me for to really reorient, reorient and realign with this divine path of being free in divine darkness. And it was just so powerful that that transmission came through. It was exactly what I needed to hear. And he had no idea of what I was going through in that sense. Um, and that like, just that question, like, are you gonna keep walking forward? And I feel like that's the question that the divine's asking me right now. Like, are you gonna show up even when you don't feel in a channeled state? When you don't feel, you know, so ta -ta -ta -ta, you know, like perfect for whatever, making a video. Like, I feel like that divine darkness descended into me to kind of wake up a maturity, like a real spiritual maturity that is willing and able no matter how the human is feeling. It's like there's something here that can listen and act on what the higher self says more so than ever. Because I used to know, like, this is the best thing to do, whatever it would be, but my emotions and thoughts would be so um, persuasive and so convincing that I, I would listen to the emotional nature and the thinking nature more than I would listen to the higher self. And so that's what my last fall from grace has brought, has brought uh, forward for me. It's just more of the spiritual maturity, more of the knowing right now that... I can wait and wait and wait and wait, but this darkness, it wants to alchemize, it wants to move. And I don't need, we don't need to wait for the divine. Sometimes we need to move forward. Like we are the divine. It's like we create that flow in a sense too. And, and to take that responsibility and that accountability and to just do what I know I need to do regardless of how I'm feeling. And that in a sense, that will create the, the movement that will move the energy that will it's like you you're going to move towards the divine and then the divine will will move towards you 10x like i've said before and so that's what i felt in um, the not talking is hard that's what i felt inspired to share today um i hope that this helps you in some way i know it's a bit all over the place um but i just wanted to share uh what i've been going through um and how this path, it can be really intense. Um, but there's something here that's more true than what you're feeling and thinking. And, it, and can you just move with that? Can you trust in that?
can you take instruction in your daily life from that place? Like today, I may not feel like going to yoga at five, but there's free yoga at the place I'm staying with an amazing yoga teacher. I don't care if I don't feel like going to yoga, you know, I'm gonna go to yoga. Like it, it, it sometimes we need that kind of a backbone. It's like that's how to use the will on the spiritual path. It's not, we don't force ourselves to do things we don't wanna do that are bad for us, of course. But when we know something's good for us, when we know something's in our highest, like eating healthy or going to the yoga class or getting in front of the fucking video and sharing your heart, then we do that. It doesn't matter how we feel. It doesn't matter our emotions and our, what our thoughts are saying. And we hold space for those parts. We, you know, it's, it's not all push, you know, it's not all, it's, it's not even a push. It's just like listening to the highest. And then when I'm not doing this, of course, I'm going to hold space for those parts of me like the parts that aren't feeling good. I'm gonna feel, you know, where those, those thoughts are coming from that are telling me, ah, it's like, we're gonna, we're gonna hold space for those too. But there, over time, I feel that there's this power that cultivates. There's this, uh, like the divine masculine, our feminine wounds start healing so we can embody the divine masculine that says, do this even though your emotional nature, you're not feeling so good. You're not feeling like it, you know? It's like, there's a power that starts cultivating that is, um, that, that makes it easier not to be kind of sunk, kind of um, sabotaged by our emotional and thinking nature. Um, and a lot of really, Craig talks about this a lot. I mean, God, the man has been through so much over the last couple of years with his health. and. He keeps showing up and keeps showing up. And I guarantee there were so many days where his emo emotional nature and his thinking nature tried to tell him not to, tried try to tell him not this week or whatever. But he is so connected to his divine nature. And there's a real strength there when you get connected to that. There's a real embodiment of the divine masculine there. Um, and I know that's what that divine darkness was about because once it started descending into me, the whole poker plan of getting off the off ramp and doing that, it felt so fucking meaningless. It felt so empty. And I still tried it anyways because I just had to like let that kind of karmic dance play out. But once that, it was like once that divine darkness descended into me, there was something here that knew what my life was about and was willing to go forward no matter what. And yeah, it feels good to do that. It feels fucking good to have shot this video. You know, it wasn't my most flowy video. It wasn't my most channel video, whatever. But it felt really good to do that. And, it, and what that does is it moves, it alchemizes a lot of that heavier energy, that denser energy, so that new energy can flow in. Now the divine can really start speaking to me because I just emptied out of a lot of stuff, right? And that's what connecting to your higher self's guidance will do. It will actually move you more into a lighter state, into a flowier state, into a more creative, abundant state. But sometimes you have to walk through fucking sludge. You have to walk through the mud and say, I'm just gonna keep walking. I know the divine will show up eventually. I know that this darkness will alchemize eventually. And then actually your emotional nature and your thinking nature get on board with the process and they become your allies in it. They become advocates for it. But for, for a while, it's like, you just gotta only listen to the higher self and go from there. Especially when times get a little darker and a little more difficult. And I think that's what my last fall from grace has done for me. It has really liberated me from a lot of the heavier, more sabotaging, um, wounded type of voices in my consciousness. It's like, they're still there, I still get to love them but I get to move now more from the higher self perspective um, and guidance. So anyways, I've said enough. This video has gone on a long time. So much love. Uh, thank you all for joining the Patreon page. It really means a lot to me and it is the best way to support this work. I'll put a link for it in the description box. Right now there is over like 40 something exclusive videos and podcasts to watch. Um, and yeah, it's just a really awesome and beautiful community that is growing over there. So I would be so honored if you guys would join that, if these videos help you. Um, I also have a link below for uh, making a one-time donation. And that is another beautiful way to support this work. 
I don't do like courses and stuff. Um, so the donations and joining the Patreon page are, are just truly um, the, the best way to, to help me um, in a financial way. So if that resonates, um, I deeply ap appreciate your support. But otherwise, just thank you so much for being here. I'm sending you all so much love and support for your journeys. And it's just been so beautiful to connect today. Namaste.